you are well aware, we're here for a wonderful, wonderful occasion. Uh, on February 4th, uh, Jean-Claude Pamani turned 80. That is the excuse for the conference. <laughs> the reason is his wonderful contributions that he's made that is going to have lasting changes for years and decades and maybe centuries to come. But before I make my opening comments, uh, I would like to turn it over to our dean. Thank you, Don. Um, I guess I'm just to hold this. <laughs> it's really um, quite a delight that this is happening, um, and a delight that it's happening for such a wonderful occasion for um, in recognition of the 80th birth birthday of Jean-Claude Falmani. I also wanted to note how wonderful it is and how appropriate that it would be held in this room. I know this is the IMBS colloquium room, but it's so much more now um, that we've designated it the loose conference room. Um, it's quite a fitting tribute and an appropriate honor to both uh, great men who have done so much for the School of Social Sciences in general, far beyond INDS. I think you know it's a mistake to think of this as an INDS thing. This is a thing that is speaking to the social and behavioral sciences across the board here at UC Irvine, having an impact across the entire campus to some of our partners in the other units. I'm thinking of ICS, some people in engineering, some people in social ecology and beyond. And also, I think, I hope, <clears throat> I intend <laughs> for it to have a profound effect beyond here and on the social and behavioral sciences more broadly. Um, the things that we have been doing here all along have really profoundly shaped the disciplines across the board and have made a whole new kind of interdisciplinary space, um, the fruits of which are apparent in the gathering before you today, and the future fruits of which I hope we'll be able to to nourish and then harvest and go on to better things um, in the years to come. It, it's really an honor to stand here before all of you and to welcome all of you. And I know that you will have a very exciting and productive couple of days of conversation and presentations. So with that, I'll turn it back to Don. Um, I will pop in and show my face again, probably with a few guests after lunch. Um, but I wish you all well for the rest of the day. And um, thanks to everyone for presenting and for coming. And my microphone fell, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's all yours. Thank, Thank you very much. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, we'll see if, we, if I'm allowed to do this. This is an intelligence test, so I usually do <laughs> All right, we'll see what we do here. Uh, there we go. So, going back to my uh, comments, that what happens is that uh, I welcome the, all of you, particularly those of you who are refugees from the bit of cold of uh, the East and uh, Europe and other places. Of course, you know you arrived here right in the midst of our bitter winter. <laughs> our bitter winter started yesterday afternoon and is scheduled to last until Sunday. <laughs> and of course, our bitter winter means it's going to be probably in the 60s, about 60 or maybe even 59. I mean, this is bitter for us. But we made a mistake. I made a serious, serious mistake and my apologies. I should have known that if I invited one person to come here, the rainmaker, Reagan way, <laughs> that, that is going to rain. And sure enough, I learned he was just, where was it, Davis or Riverside a little while back, and it rained there. And now he's here, and it rains here. So Mike, it's your fault. <laughs> I expected to be thanked for it. <laughs> well, actually, we are. We do celebrate, because we're in the midst of a drought. And so we do uh, celebrate very much the idea of rain. Uh, those of you from the East that are uh, seeing rain and snow and cold, uh, yes, it's, uh, it's uh, <laughs> strange, but we're celebrating it on there. And we're celebrating more. We're celebrating Jean-Claude, as I stated already. His 80th birthday uh, on the 4th of this uh, month, March, uh, February 4th. That didn't want straight anymore. Uh, and, uh, but we're just using that as an excuse. The real reason is to celebrate his wonderful contributions, continuing contributions, and it is to go the next step. We're going to talk about some of his contributions, but what's next? What's the next step? Where do we go from here? We have uh, his, his field, his research has covered so many different areas. Tomorrow, be sure to be here to listen to Jeff Iverson, who always gives a wonderful talk. We're talking about the psychophysics series. 
But what he does is his research beyond psychophysics, et cetera, spans from the abstract to the pragmatic, the practical, the practical that is influencing millions of people. Not many people can say that. Let's talk about a little bit about the abstract. Let's start with that, because that's going to be the first topic today. Meaningfulness. I talked about it being about 60 degrees here. And I checked back in Chicago, where I spent a good portion of my career. And it's going to be in the 30s, low 30s. So hey, you know, it's not bad here. We're about twice as warm. <laughs> Is that a meaningful statement? If we put it in Celsius, <laughs> we're about 20 times warmer, <laughs> OK? And so therefore, the question is that there are a large number of statements that are made all over the place. And the issue is, are they or are they not meaningful? In a large number, in a lot of papers, but really pioneered a lot of it by uh, Louis Nairns, who will be our first speaker, and Jean-Claude, it's how did we take this statement of meaningfulness? What is meaningful? And how do we determine whether or not it is? The next speaker, Fred Roberts, is going to tell us where a lot of statements are supposed to be meaningful, but they're not. This is of particular importance when we start looking at the modeling of the social and the behavioral sciences. A lot of the models in the social and behavioral sciences are excellent. They're moving us forward. But a lot of them may be seriously misleading. And the issue is to find a way, find a validation method, if you will, of how do we determine what is meaningful and what is not. And I think the work pioneered by Jean-Claude and extending into the biological and the physical sciences, which we're going to hear from Jean-Claude, is very, very important work, really on the forefront of this crucial, critical issue in the social and the behavioral sciences, which is of interest to us. Let's go to another area. Another area would be the question of teaching, education. We all teach. We're supposed to, anyway, aren't we? <laughs> and so what happens is, uh, let's, take a, uh, let's take an algebra course. Before you do certain events in algebra, what do you need to know? You, you go to any conference on education of whatever. And there's a debate, well, no, 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 to really, for the students to truly understand how to take the derivative, or how to do such and such in chemistry, or how to do such and such in any area, there is the concern of what do the students need to master first. And the genius of Jean-Claude is to say, let's use the muscle power of mathematics to try to analyze that question. What he did is he said, let's look at directed graphs, various other type constructs of this type. Let's set up and find out what are the foundational results, theorems, that are needed so that we can, in a very systematic and serious way, answer these questions. And what he has done with this is taken to the next step after the theory and put it into the pragmatics. The pragmatics, working with teachers, working with students, working with experiments, etc. He created the Alex Company, where indeed, with let's just take the area of mathematics. Everybody's done so chemistry, is that right? The other area. What they do is they now have learning type facilities where students can self-learn, et cetera. Just absolutely wonderful and amazing. This last year, 1,300,000 college students were placed into the classes based on the Alex program with high degree of accuracy, much higher degree of accuracy than what we've had before. And from here, we're getting things such as the learning space, and we're getting uh, powerful techniques. My daughter, who is a teacher, says that, uh, you know, in uh, middle school, said they just swear by Alex. It is the program where they can put the kids on there and the kids can really work and develop at their own pace. 
An aspect of the Alex program came to me from a colleague of mine, a former student of mine, who is back at Northwestern. In fact, he took my position after I left. Maybe he pushed me up. Uh, but uh, back at Northwestern University. And he has a second son. The first son is through graduate school. The second son is in second grade. And uh, what he did is um, he asked his son about mathematics. And they had this, 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 this program. This is Wilmette, uh, Illinois. And the program is Alex. So he asked his son, uh, what do you do there? He says, well, you write down the, the questions, and then if you get it right, you get a, another question back, and it's harder. And the father was quite impressed. And he says, whoa, he says, that's very good. He says, so what do you do? Oh, very easy. He says, I get them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so I get easier problems. <laughs> OK, so we have to still worry about the incentive program <laughs> problem of, uh, of my student's uh, uh, son. But then what he did is to move everything to the next stage, what uh, Jean-Claude did is he uh, sold the company and uh, to places they can now develop it to the next step and move it on. But you know, Jean-Claude, one of the pioneers in the mathematical behavioral sciences, echoing precisely what you said on here, one of the pioneers wants to be sure that this area of the mathematical, social, and behavioral sciences continues. And so with the money that he received from the selling of the company, get this, he endowed three, three shares with the idea of promoting precisely the mathematical, behavioral sciences. And also, there is a gift there for this institute. And the purpose of this institute is, of course, to promote the mathematical, behavioral sciences. This is, beyond his research, is another way in which he's going to be continuing our understanding and advances in this area. And for that, I think he deserves a hand uh, applause. For <laughs> So what we want to do then today is to start looking at some of what he has done, but more important, what is the next step? How do we take this material and how do we advance it and promote it and refine it so that it continues to influence the way in which we think in the mathematical, social, and behavioral sciences for the decades to come? And in that direction, our first talk is on exactly the question of meaningfulness. Uh, and uh, one of Jean-Claude's uh, co-authors, Louis Nairn. Louis? <laughs> 